Hello and welcome to my channel where I'll be telling you all kinds of strange stories ranging from true crime to some much less believable although just as fascinating tales. For today's video we have the unforgettable case of Hannah Up. Listen in and see what you think. The Caribbean had a very severe hurricane season in September 2017. The island of St Thomas in the United States Virgin Islands had already been devastated by Storm Irma when news spread that a second hurricane was on its way. With just a few days to prepare, inhabitants on the tiny island started to leave or bunker down. Hannah Up, 32, was one of the residents who decided to remain. Hannah was described as bright, active, brave and adventurous when teaching at the island's Montessori school. However, the stress of the storms seemed to be taking its toll on her. She was distracted, a little confused and, she wasn't afraid to admit, worried about the potential devastation that was about to occur. Yet she stayed. She stayed so she could help. She stayed because that's the kind of person she was. Or is. But Hannah never got to help with the clear-up operation after the storm ripped its way across the island. Her colleagues, thinking she was preparing her classroom for the second storm, discovered she was in fact missing. Her cheerful, upbeat attitude meant that they had had no idea that she was thinking of leaving if that's what actually had happened. Even if she had been rather quiet recently, her friends and workmates thought it was simply stress from the storm. They would never have guessed she would deliberately put herself in danger and try to escape the island during the storm, especially one that was as dangerous as this one. But the fact was, Hannah Up did disappear, and that meant she was in danger, whether she had chosen to go of her own accord or not. The weather was just too much of an issue for her to stay safe. Hannah's roommate saw her get up and leave the home at 8am on the 14th of September 2017. Despite the fact that she was leaving home earlier than normal, her roommate thought she was heading to work early to help the school, to get it ready, to prepare for the storm. Anyone who knew Hannah would probably have thought the same. Sadly, this would turn out to be the last verified sighting of this cheerful, much-loved teacher. The next day, Hannah missed a school meeting, which her colleague and closest friend Maggie Guzman felt was odd. Maggie attempted to contact her friend but received no response. Worried, she went by Hannah's home and saw her car was not in the driveway. Maggie's concern increased and she began calling Hannah's friends and relatives. Another friend of Hannah's cryptically advised Maggie to look by the water. What did that mean? It's yet another strange puzzle piece that doesn't fit yet but might do later. For Maggie, panic started to set in. This was not like Hannah at all. Something must have happened to her, something bad. With that one thought in her mind, Maggie organised a search party and urged everyone to start searching in Hannah's favourite places. Hannah's favourite swimming spot was Sapphire Beach. Maybe this was what her friend had meant. Maybe it hadn't been a mysterious and cryptic comment after all. Maybe they were just suggesting that Hannah, who loved Sapphire Beach, had gone there. No matter what, the beach was destroyed. Hurricane Irma had transformed the beautiful coastline into an unrecognisable wreck, covered in debris and flotsam and jetsam. It was upsetting to look at, but the fact that the beach was empty and Hannah's car was in the car park was worse. And then, even more frightening, 
Hannah's handbag, passport, ID and hundreds of dollars in cash were inside the vehicle. On a bar stool, in what used to be a beach hut bar before the hurricane took hold and tore it down, was a pile of neatly folded clothes, sandals and car keys. They belonged to Hannah. What the hell had happened? Hannah had been gone for two days before the formal search started. It was assumed, because what else could be assumed at that point with that evidence, that she had gone swimming and something had happened to her either in the water, an accident in other words, or on the way, something a little less accidental, maybe involving a person or persons unknown. This latter idea wasn't really considered for very long. The accident theory felt like a better fit. Because ferries and local boaters were assisting in the island's evacuation, there was considerable boat activity all around the island. Could Hannah have had an accident after she went into the water because of all these extra boats and low visibility? Friends and police scoured the whole perimeter of the island but found no trace of Hannah. It was at this time that the information about Hannah Up's past that changed the entire feeling of the investigation came to the fore. During the hunt, Maggie Guzman discovered that this was not the first time Hannah had gone missing, vanishing without a trace and without letting anyone know she was going somewhere. This was actually the third time Hannah had disappeared and the previous two instances had, strangely, occurred under identical circumstances. Let's go back nine years before Hannah's 2017 St Thomas disappearance. It was September 2008. Hannah, aged 23, said goodbye to her roommate. She was going out for a run and wouldn't be long. She had to get back to get ready for work. It was the first day of her new job as a teacher in New York City. But she never made it to the school where she was meant to be teaching. She went missing between leaving her apartment for her run and coming back to get showered and changed for work. When she failed to show up for work, this prompted a missing person inquiry. The NYPD actually regarded the case as an abduction from the outset, mainly because Hannah had vanished leaving her wallet, ID and cash at her apartment. She simply disappeared into thin air. Nine days after Hannah vanished, the NYPD got a call from a man who went to school with Hannah, who claimed to have seen her in an Apple store. He said that he approached her and inquired if she was the Hannah who had gone missing, and that she strangely informed him that she wasn't Hannah and that she wasn't missing. This confused the man greatly. It creeped him out. He was certain he was speaking to Hannah. After all, he had gone to school with her, and he knew for a fact that there was a police investigation going on into her disappearance, so the entire state of affairs caused him some consternation. He wasn't sure whether Hannah was telling the truth, that she wasn't missing anymore and the investigation was over, or if she didn't want to be discovered and was deliberately lying to him. The man just couldn't decide what was best. He didn't want to put Hannah in danger, but he couldn't not mention the fact that he had seen her when, as far as he knew, she was a missing person and people were worried about her. He decided to contact the police and report his encounter with Hannah. The NYPD obtained security video from the shop and was able to authenticate Hannah Up's identity. Yes, it was her. But if that was the case, why had she informed the man that she wasn't Hannah? Why had she denied her identity when she knew he knew who she was? The NYPD investigated further and found that Hannah had gone to the Apple Store to check into her Gmail account. This, as well as the CCTV, is what verified who she was. Yet, although the missing person had been found, this encounter raised more questions than it answered. What was she doing? Why was she hiding and why had she apparently given up on her life? After all, 
What else could her disappearance be about? Surely she was running away from something. It was just that she hadn't run very far. Two weeks after her disappearance, the NYPD found that she had been showering at her former gin. Despite the fact that she lacked identification, she did manage to remember her gym number and a front desk employee was able to authenticate her identity. Hence, she was allowed in to wash and do what she wanted. Hannah had also been seen at a Starbucks in Soho and the police rushed there when they found out, but by the time they arrived, she had gone, disappeared into the crowds of New York City once more. On the 20th day after her disappearance, the ferry captain of the Staten Island Ferry saw a woman's body bobbing in the water, floating face down. The authorities quickly sent out a rescue boat, thinking the young lady was dead and wanting to retrieve the body before the tourists got too upset. But those on board the dinghy were surprised when she gasped for breath and sobbed as they pulled her out of the water. She was immediately taken to hospital and found to be extremely dehydrated, hypothermic and sunburned, but, quite miraculously, generally okay. The biggest problem was that she couldn't tell medical personnel who she was or what had happened to her. At the hospital, she was diagnosed with a rare type of amnesia known as dissociative fugue, which is typically caused by severe psychological stress. Sufferers often seem to be quite normal. No one would know there was anything wrong in most cases. They may not be able to tell others who they are, but they can go on with daily tasks that they will have done on a regular basis in the past. For example, they'll show up at their former gym and know their membership number, or go to locations they are comfortable with that were a habit for them. Starbucks could be exactly that kind of place. After a few hours, the woman was finally able to remember her name and randomly, but usefully, her mother's phone number. It was at this stage that the doctors, nurses and police realised they were looking at the missing Hannah up. But what had happened to Hannah to cause her to be in this state? Hannah's mother arrived less than an hour later and Hannah's first words were, Why am I wet? She had no recollection of the previous three weeks and the last thing she recalled doing was going for a run on the day she vanished. Hannah, confused and scared, hated the press attention that came along with her amazing discovery and strange story. She even contemplated changing her name to avoid the attention. In the end, Hannah moved away from New York a year after the event to get away from the media spotlight. She wanted to go somewhere no one knew her name or what had happened to her, whatever that actually might have been. She finally made her way to Maryland, where she worked as a teaching assistant at a Montessori school for underprivileged children. Hannah was enthralled with the Montessori philosophy and really liked her job there. She threw herself wholeheartedly into the job and everything seemed to be back on track for Hannah up. Everything was back on track until September 2011, that is. Hannah's mother received a call from the police on a bright September morning and was told that Hannah had been reported missing once again after she failed to show up for work. During the search for her, her handbag was discovered on a nearby walking path. It had her phone, money and keys still in it and the last time anybody saw her was the day before. Hannah's mother got a call from an unknown number the following day at midnight. The voice on the other end of the line simply said, Mom? Hannah had been in a fugue state once again, but she had come out of it. When she came back to herself, she discovered she was sitting in a woodland stream with a shopping cart next to her. Hannah had no clue how she had arrived there, what had happened to her, or what she had done, or even how much time had passed. She was able to find her way out of the woods, find some office buildings, and borrow a stranger's phone. And once again, it was her mum she wanted the most. After her second fugue episode, she attempted to explain how water helped her find herself. 
She told her mother she had flashbacks of her disappearance in New York and she distinctly remembered being drawn to water. She couldn't explain why, nor could doctors, but there was something about being near water that helped her remember. All three disappearances occurred in September, just before the start of the new school year. In 2017, her friends had observed she was behaving strangely in the days leading up to her third and final disappearance. She had said to one of her friends that she disliked the autumn, possibly in reference, whether she knew it or not, to her previous disappearances that had all taken place at the same time of year. Hannah had decided that she would keep her past a secret so none of her acquaintances in St Thomas were aware of her previous disappearances. Her family, who were all too aware of them, had been concerned about her decision to go so far away from home and from those who understood what might happen, but Hannah had smiled and remarked, It's a tiny island. How far can I go? Hannah had stopped using her phone six days before her disappearance and it would probably have been as though she was operating on autopilot, doing the same things as always, following the same routine, even if she didn't really know why. Those closest to her, unaware of her background, dismissed her strange behaviours as storm-related stress. According to experts, she could have been in a fugue state for many days before it finally took control and she decided that water was the best place for her. After all, she was always attracted to the water when in a fugue state. Rescue crews looked frantically for two days until the search was called off due to Hurricane Maria's landfall. Even worse than Irma, Maria brought strong winds and rain, pounding St Thomas once again. The search was resumed by boat and aircraft after the storm passed, but there was no trace of Hannah, even after searching all 80 islands in the vicinity. Some theories suggest that she swam to one of the other islands and then moved on from there, or was picked up by a local boater. The days leading up to Hurricane Maria were a frenzy of activity and she might easily have been lost in the mix. Her disappearance in New York showed that she was very clever and could rely on prior knowledge to keep herself safe. So the hope is that the same is true this time too. Hannah's mother often visits St Thomas and everyone on the island recognises her. She is still hopeful that one day Hannah will reappear somewhere and realise who she is. And as for that friend who mentioned that Hannah could be found near the water... It can only be assumed that despite what she said, Hannah had confided in someone during her time on St Thomas. It's the only idea that makes any sense. So Hannah up, in a fugue state, decided to go to her favourite swimming area, knowing that there was water there, perhaps not knowing why she needed to go there at all. Sadly, Hannah didn't find herself. We don't know what happened to her, Perhaps she waded into the sea and got lost in the storm. Perhaps she did swim far away and is now safe somewhere, just not knowing who she is. But whatever happened, she is currently still listed as a missing person. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed the content, click the subscribe and like buttons so you can receive more content like this strange story every week. See you next time.